Hi guys, are you tired of remembering passwords? Are you using the same password for everything to avoid the chances of forgetting it? If not, then you might be using the save password features of browsers or using a password manager, trusting them to keep everything secure. What if you could host your own password manager? Fully secure, open source, and completely under your control which you can access from any device. In this video, we'll walk through the entire process, finding the Vault Warden image, creating a Docker Compose file, deploying it and the account creation process. Watch till the end because I'll also show you how to lock things down by disabling account creation once Vault Warden is exposed to the internet. We will also see what other features we can expect from this open source password manager. So let's begin by searching the Docker image we will be hosting. Let's go to Google and search for Docker Hub. Now open the Docker Hub's official website by clicking on this first link. Here, we need to search for Vault Warden. Among all these options, we need to select Vault Warden slash server. This is an official Docker image by Vault Warden. As you can see here in the description that this Docker image can be used as an alternative for the Bitwarden's own server API. Along with it, this will bring you more security as it is completely self-hosted and no dependency on the Bitwarden's official server. Also, it is compatible with all Bitwarden clients. You can go through this description to get more details. Let's proceed to create the Docker Compose file. I have already connected to an Ubuntu machine using Remote SSH. You can click on the I button if you are interested to know how to remotely connect using Remote SSH from VS Code. In this same machine, I have already hosted NGINX Proxy Manager. This is the Docker Compose file for NGINX Proxy Manager. And this is the volume directory, which has been attached to the container. Let's create another directory as Vault Warden. And inside this directory, we will create the Docker Compose file. Make sure while creating this file, we have to name it as docker-compose.yml. Let's get started with the Docker Compose file. You can copy this code from video description. First, we will mention services followed by a colon. Remember in YML file, we need to strictly follow the indentation and syntax. Every time when we need to provide more details, we have to end that statement with a colon. And in next line, we have to indent it by providing two spaces. Now in the next line, give two space and provide a name to the service as Vault Warden. Next, we will provide the image. For that, I will copy it from Docker Hub. And paste it here. Now let's define the container name. I will name it as Vault Warden. Next, I will define an environment variable called signups allowed. And we'll set it to true for permitting account creation. Now we will expose ports from the container to the host. I will quickly check it from the Docker Hub. For this service, we need to expose port 80 from the container. I will define this port in the Docker Compose file. Next, we have to define volumes, where we will attach a directory in the container to store all the data. For that, I will create a new directory inside this volume. We will use the same path which has been used in NGINX service. So I will copy it from here. Then we will add a slash and a new directory name, Vault Warden. 
and will bind it to the data directory of the container. At the end, we have to define a restart policy. We need to set this to unless stopped. And also, I will change this port to 82. As in my host machine, I'm already using port 80 and 81 for NGINX Proxy Manager. Now, let's move on to the terminal and navigate to the directory of Docker Compose file. Before this, make sure you have installed Docker in your system. If not, you can check our video on how to install Docker. I will provide the link in the i button. To deploy the container, I will use the command docker compose up d. This command will keep the container up and running, even if we close the terminal. Now our Vault Warden container is up, and the Vault Warden directory is also created here inside volume. As we expose port 82 of our host machine, we can access it from the web browser. Enter the IP address of the host machine followed by port 82. We are able to access the Vault Warden login page, but there is a problem. The connection is not secure, and Vault Warden does not allow us to create account if we are not connected over a HTTPS connection. Let me show you. If we click on Create Account, then fill the details, and try to create an account, you can see we are getting an error as we don't have a HTTPS connection. Now before proceeding, if you have not already set up the NGINX Proxy Manager or any other service for SSL, you can check out the video in the I button to complete the setup. Now, once you have completed the setup, let's add a new reverse proxy, an NGINX Proxy Manager. For that, let's first log in there. Let's go to Proxy Hosts and add a new proxy for Vault Warden. Here first, we need to enter the domain name. Along with the IP address of the host machine and the port we are using for Vault Warden and enable these options. Now select the SSL certificate here. Don't forget to enable these extra SSL features before you save this. And now click on save. The reverse proxy for Vault Warden has been added here. Let's check it by clicking on this URL. Now I will retry the account creation process, but this time with the SSL certificate. As you can see in the URL, the connection is secure now. To create an account, we need to click on this create account link. Let's fill all this details as we did earlier. We can use either original or any dummy email. For now, I will use a dummy email. Then we will enter the username here. Here we have to enter the master password. This indicator will inform you if the password is not strong enough. Let me provide a strong password. Retype the password again. Here we can enter some hint for our password. This password hint is not mandatory, so we can skip this for now. And don't forget to enable this checkbox. It will check either our password is exposed in any known data breaches. Now let's try to create this account by clicking on this create account button. My account is created successfully. Let's now log in to Vault Warden. Click on this remember me. So we don't have to provide the email every time we log in. Let's enter the password. Cool. We have logged in here. As this is a password manager, I might need to access this service from outside of my network. So to add more security to the service, I will change the environment variable signups allowed to false. 
This will prevent anyone from creating an account. Now let's redeploy the container. By using the same command, docker compose up dash D. Let's check if this change is preventing us to create account or not. Let's quickly fill all these details to create the account. and click on this Create Account button. As expected, it is showing an error as registration not allowed and the account is not created. Now that we are all set, it's time to secure all our credentials with it. Let's get the Bitwarden browser extension. For that, open up a browser. I will go with Chrome. Now click on the three dots in the top right corner. In this menu, we will select Extensions. Then click on Manage Extension. Now to discover more extension, click on this. It will open Chrome Web Store. Let's search for Bitwarden here. We will go with the first extension as it is the official one. Now let's click on the Add to Chrome button. And in the pop-up, select Add Extension. The Bitwarden extension is added successfully in the browser. I will pin this extension so that it will be always visible in the toolbar. Now let's test our password manager. I'm going to save some credentials on it. And we'll try to log in by using this service. First, I will save the credentials for NGINX Proxy Manager. For that, click on this Bitwarden icon beside the address bar. This pop-up window will appear. Here, we have to use our self-hosted server. To do that, click on this logging in on. And choose self-hosted in this drop-down. In the server URL field, we have to enter the domain name which we created using NGINX for Vault Warden. And click on Save. Let's now enter the Vault Warden email here. Also select the Remember Email checkbox so we don't have to provide our email every time we will log in. Now let's proceed by clicking on continue. Let's enter the master password here. Then click on the login button. Next we will save our NGINX login credentials. For that, let's go to tab and click on this add a login link. It will open a form. I will provide all the necessary details here. Let's first go to the URL field. By default, it will be automatically filled in from the address bar, so we don't have to type it manually. Now, in the name, I will provide NGINX Proxy Manager, so it will be easy to identify at the time of logging in. Next, we will enter the username and password for NGINX in the following fields. If our login requires email, we can provide it in the username field and save it by clicking on the save button at the top. Great, we have successfully saved our first credentials for NGINX in Vault Warden. Now if I try to type my credentials here, the Vault Warden option will appear. I will just click on this option to autofill my credentials. Now hit the sign in button. And we have successfully logged in. This makes logging in more secure and quick. Now I'll repeat the same process for Proxmox. As you can see on the login page, Bitwarden is suggesting the credentials we saved for NGINX. Let's add the Proxmox credentials here too. First, click on the Bitwarden extension on the top. To add another entry, just click on the plus button. 
and fill out this form. Just like NGINX, I will change the name to Proxmox and fill up the username and password of it. Once done, just save it. Now if I click on this new entry, it will auto-fill the credentials and we can log in easily. Next, I will use this password manager for TrueNash as well. Now we have to follow the same process as we did earlier for NGINX and Proxmox. Let's quickly fill all these details. Now, when we will try to enter the username, the autofill options will appear. From this list, I will select TrueNash. Then hit the login button. We have logged in successfully in TrueNash. Now let's move on to Vault Warden's dashboard. I'm going to show you some cool features it offers. Here we can generate passwords, change preferences, update profile details, and so much more. But for now, let's focus on the generator. To get started, I will go to the Bitwarden extension and click on Vault below. From there, we'll see the list of saved logins. I want to change my super strong password for NGINX to something even stronger. For that, let's click on it. Here we can see all the details we filled in earlier. To modify it, click on Edit button. As you can see, this is my super strong password. But this time, I want something real strong. So I will click on this generate password. Here we will click on yes. This feature will help us to create password as well as passphrase. For password, we can set the length and other things we might want to include. Like I want to include special characters, so I will select this option. As I'm satisfied with this password, Let's click on the select button at the top. Now my password has been overwritten. We can also check if this password has been exposed anywhere by using this button. Luckily this one is safe. So I will save it. Now let me quickly change it in the NGINX proxy manager too. All right, now let's check it. We will try to log in with a new password. And with that, we are in. As I mentioned earlier, Vault Warden comes with some really great features. Let me give you a quick peek. In account settings, you can update your email, name, or even change your master password. Also, you can delete your account. Under Tools, you'll find options to import data as well as export the vault. If you want to personalize your experience, head over to Preferences where you can switch up themes, languages, and more. Here, I will change Theme to the Dark as my preference. For extra security, we can enable Rotate Encryption Key. Also, we can enable two-step authentication using any authenticator. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the next one. And if you have any questions or need help, feel free to drop them in the comments section. You can also join my growing community on Discord for more in-depth discussions. Don't forget to follow me on social media for the latest updates and tips. Thanks for watching.